Good evening, you beautiful people, and welcome to worship on this Saturday night, June the 13th, and it is Celebration Weekend, so we are thrilled that you are joining us tonight. As many of you know, we are having our virtual worship tonight because tomorrow on Sunday the 14th, we will continue with Celebration Sunday, honoring our kids and youth and bidding them to take care for the summer. We also celebrate that our oldest youth, our oldest YAC member, Garrett Lemke, is graduating grade 12 this year. And so we offer him sincerest congratulations and best wishes on this huge achievement. We'll be hearing more from Garrett later in the service, but we'll get to those details in a minute. Please note that there is still a Kids Corner video posted, even though the service tonight is a virtual family service. And this video is a bedtime story. So all of our younger kids, our young at heart, all are invited to check out the video for tonight because it is another story from my home province of Newfoundland and Labrador. So for tomorrow, we hope that the families of our Sunday school and YAC members will pop by the church parking lot tomorrow, Sunday, June 14th from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m., which you may have already heard about from the church newsletter. Don and Terry will have a little package for their Sunday school kids. The grade three children will receive their Bibles, and we encourage everyone who is available and able in our community of faith to drive on by the church between 11, or excuse me, before 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. to offer their socially distanced best wishes to our youth and of course, Garrett as well. Friends, we also have a couple of brief announcements. Many of you have had questions about how our church finances may have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. In case you missed it, there was a letter that was written by the finance and stewardship ministry teams, and it was in the newsletter for this week. So if you overlooked it, please feel free to go back and check it out. We ask that you please read it through to get an understanding of where we're at financially, given the situation right now. The finance and stewardship ministry teams have also offered solutions to how we might offset revenues lost by events that have been canceled for the upcoming fall and winter. Also, please know that we have a group of dedicated and incredibly enthusiastic church members who have begun planning and organizing church events that not only allow for safe and socially distanced connection, but also raise money for the church. So please stay tuned for more information about that. As of now, we do have a bottle drive that's coming up on Saturday, June the 20th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the church parking lot. And we will continue to have this bottle drive the first Saturday of every month going forward. We encourage you to spread the word to help and support our community of faith. So please, anyone who's in your life who might be interested in donating their bottles, please let them know that this is an opportunity that is available. Friends, we thank you for joining us for worship this day. We'll begin with a video from Yak. It is our tradition to have the graduating Yak members interviewed by other youth in their graduation videos. And we're continuing with that this year. So we'll listen to what Garrett has to say about his faith journey, as well as his plans. Then we will listen to the anthem, we'll hear scripture, have a godly play story as a reflection, and bless ourselves on our way. So friends, let us continue with our worship. We're so glad you're here. I'm Jock. I'm 12 and I go to Sherwood Heights. I'm Carmen, I'm in grade 7. I'm 12 and I go to Sherwood Heights. I'm Garrett, I'm 17, I'm in grade 12, I'm graduating, and I go to Beth Facey. Welcome to our grad show, and our graduation person is Garrett. Who would you be most likely to put your trust in? Like, based on who you know now, you know, where do you put your trust? Um, I, I think the people I've surrounded myself with and I'm, like, really good friends with, I can trust all of them. Like, even with my family. My, like, my family I can definitely trust. 
uh, my like three really really close friends, I can definitely trust them. I'm not, I wouldn't be worried about sharing anything with them. So I, I think it's more of just you have to focus on surrounding yourself with people who you can trust. What was Sunday school like from age three to twelve? Uh, well, it was it was a lot less deep. It wasn't we weren't very philosophical back then. Um, I, I would say it was pretty fun. Um, I know it, it, sh it definitely shaped my uh, childhood a lot and shaped who I am today. surgeon, but I do know I will never work on brains okay. because I would be too scared of messing something up <laughs> because anywhere else in the body, if I mess up, I can, I can, I have a little bit of time to fix it. And if, I, if I'm working in a brain and my hand like slips a tiny bit and I sever something, it's gone. <laughs> so yeah, I don't feel confident. Maybe that changes in the future, but as of right now, no, no way I'm doing neuro, but everything else is open. What would you do in your free time when you're not studying? Uh, in my free time, well, right now, which I plan to continue as I go into university, would be I play handball, which is racket ball, except you use your hand instead of a racket. I also play piano, which you may have heard, or you are going to hear actually later in the service, depending on where we are. I don't know where this is going to fit in. But uh, I've played that for about 13 years now. Wow, I've played piano for a long time. But yeah, no, so I've, I really enjoy it, and I'd like to 
play it in my free time a lot, even when I, like, I just kind of go on piano and just figure out songs that I'm not, like, learning or anything. If I just, like, learn, like, the bass melody, I'm always happy, and it helps me relax and de-stress, so I tend to do that a lot. Do you think more about Jesus or God in Christian Christian faith? Um, I'd, I'd probably have to say I think a lot more about God, because like as much as uh, Jesus was like an actual person on Earth, I'm not I've not been alive when Jesus is alive, at least to my knowledge. You know, maybe second coming, who so knows? But uh, God tends to be like, for me at least, he's one of those like overarching things, which kind of covers a lot of different things. Like he. I tend to think of it as like the reason for why things happen, actually, which is a lot of why of what this service is based on. It's a lot of I tend to think like if you look, think about like the Big Bang, why that happens, like everybody's like, oh, it's such a weird thing to happen. That's what started the universe. I tend to think that maybe it was like God started that. You know, it's one of those things where I tend to think he he created a lot of those things, and he's the explanation for like the why. Like a rock, like a rock, God is under our feet. Like the starry night sky, God is over our head. Like the sun on the horizon, God is ever before. Like the river runs to ocean, our home is in God. Marankloch, Marankloch, ha ish lia vom geen. Mar na reel tin san art, ha e os mo jong. Marangri an san jerich, ha e girum nam gri. Mar a vinja san inver, für dich mi sha san jern fat mo.
A reading from Exodus chapter 2. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because, she said, I drew him out of the water. Our reflection today is a godly play story called The Story of Moses. Let's all take a deep breath because we all need to be ready for this story. After many years, a new Pharaoh ruled. He did not remember what Joseph had done for Egypt. The people of God became slaves. They were trapped and they could not go home. There were so many of the people of God in Egypt that the Pharaoh was afraid they would take his kingdom away from him. So he said, the baby boys could not stay. One of the mothers made a basket of bulrushes woven together and hid the baby in a basket. She put the basket in the reeds by the Nile River. The daughter of the Pharaoh found the basket. She named the baby Moses 
and raised him in the palace. When Moses was a young man, he saw an Egyptian hurting one of the people of God, and Moses grew angry and did something terrible. Then he ran away to the desert. Moses stayed with the family of Jethro. He married Zipporah, one of Jethro's daughters, and became a shepherd. He lived there for 40 years. One day, while Moses was taking care of Jethro's sheep, he took them to the mountain of God, Mount Horeb, which is also called Sinai. And suddenly, he saw a bush that was burning, but did not burn up. God spoke to Moses from the burning bush. God told Moses that the cries of the people of God in Egypt had been heard. Moses was to go and set the people free. Moses said, but who am I to do such a thing? God said, I will be with you. What is your name? My name is Yahweh. I am who I am. Can't you send someone else? Aaron, your brother, will go with you. He will speak for you. So Moses went back to Egypt to tell the Pharaoh to let his people go. Moses went many times to the Pharaoh to tell him to let the people go. And many times the Pharaoh said, no. Terrible things happened in the land of Egypt. And finally, the Pharaoh said yes. God helped Moses lead people through the water into freedom. Moses led the people through the desert for 40 years. The people of God grew tired and hungry and discouraged, and they grumbled to Moses. But God showed the people that God was with them by giving them quail and manna to eat. When the people were thirsty from traveling in the desert, they complained to Moses, and Moses talked with God. God told Moses to strike a rock with his staff. Water came out of the rock so the people could drink. Something happened that made God angry. Moses did not keep faith with God in the midst of the people. So God told Moses that he would see, but never enter the promised land. The people were free, but they did not know the best way to go. With God's help, Moses led the people of God to God's mountain. This mountain, Mount Sinai, was where God had spoken to him from the burning bush, and Moses went up on the mountain to talk to God. The people waited and waited and waited. Moses was gone a long time. The people began to think that Moses was never coming back. So they asked Aaron to make them a new God to lead them. Aaron took all the gold the women were wearing and melted it. He shaped the melted gold into a calf. He gave the calf to the people saying, here is your God. And the people built an altar and worshiped the golden calf. Moses came down from the mountain. His face was shining he carried the 10 best ways, but found the people worshiping the golden calf. He grew angry and broke the stone tablets on which the best 10 ways were written. He took the golden calf and threw it in the fire. The people were sorry. So God gave Moses the 10 best ways again, and Moses gave them to the people. God told Moses to have the people make a box called an ark to hold the 10 best ways. The box was covered with gold and it had poles on the sides so people could always carry it with them wherever they went. God told Moses how to make a tent 
called a tabernacle for the ark. And when people stopped to rest in the wilderness, God's glory filled the tent, and Moses came close to God there. When he came out, his face was shining. After 40 years, they came to another mountain, Mount Nebo. Moses looked over the promised land from the mountaintop, and God said, I will give this land to the people of God, but you will not cross over. Moses died there, and to this day, no one knows where he was buried. Now, I wonder, what part of this story did you like the best? I wonder what part is most important. I wonder what part is about you or what part was especially for you. I wonder if we can leave out any of this story and still have all that we need. Here ends the story. Let's prepare our hearts and our minds for prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for all the days of our lives, especially for the days that we are, in some way, able to be together. We thank you for the opportunities we are given to grow closer to you. We thank you for the people that have been placed in our lives to help us grow into the kind of people we are called to be. Our parents, families, friends, youth leaders, and Sunday school teachers. Holy God, we offer our prayers for ourselves to you. We offer our prayers for our friends, our community, the worldwide church, for our families, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, grandparents, and our pets, for friends and those longing for friendship and community, we pray. Loving God, we pray for the end of racism, that all will be treated with dignity and respect. We pray that we become better stewards of your creation. We pray for youth in the juvenile justice system, that they may find hope and healing. We offer our prayers for those who are sick or suffering, for those worrying about the health of their loved ones, for those grieving the loss of a loved one, for those who do not have enough, enough food, enough access to health care, enough peace, enough joy. We pray for those who are looking for work. Holy creating God, we pray for peace on earth, for all who live under the threat of war and for victims and survivors of violence everywhere. We pray for our world and her leaders. May they make decisions out of love for all your people. We take time now to offer the prayers that sit on our hearts this day. Holy One, may we know you are with us, not just in this time and space, but always and everywhere. And finally today, we lift up in your name, Sherwood Park United Church and our sister churches everywhere that offer safety, friendship, and a faith community that is inclusive and affirming of all people on their faith journeys. We bind together these and all of our prayers as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Friends, thank you for being here with us for worship. And another reminder to join us tomorrow morning, Sunday, June the 14th, from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. in the church parking lot to come drive by and wave to all of our youth, our kids, our youth leaders, and I'll be there too. So friends, as we go forth this evening, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into love's doors. Go in peace to love and serve. Amen.